And you're in charge of your own story. You're important enough that you get to decide when to start a chapter or to end a chapter. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. I mean, I don't even want to call him a guest because he's a member of the family. And uh, Rob Shooter, <laughs> if you've never heard Rob on with us, it's been a while since he's been on with us, uh, then you, you, what a treat you're in for. We'll <laughs> leave it at that. Hey, was there a problem with us? Someone actually sent a text and I can't believe you're having Rob Shooter on. I thought you guys hated each other. I'm like, what? <gasps> oh. Don't you love how I started our interview like that? <laughs> oh, I I love, oh, it's I like Mariah and J-Lo. We had a war. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, I don't think we had an issue, did we? <laughs> no. You no. know what it was? We had an issue with Matthew Hussey, and they think all Brits are the same <laughs> person. Oh, 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 he's a very, he's much better looking than I am, Mr. Hussey, uh, but I'm a lot more fun. There you, <laughs> you are. There you so, <laughs> Rob has. Uh, I, I just. I'll be very personal here. Rob has not only been a, a wonderful guest on our show for many years, but he's actually a great friend. And and in and, uh, and sometimes in your professional life, you need to have someone to look up to to give you great advice. And Rob has always been there for me, and I know he'll always be there for anyone on the show because you are. Well, you know what? You wrote a book about everything you've learned and a lot of things you've learned. Talk about your book. It's out today called The Four Word Answer. Oh, The Four Word Answer. Thank you, Elvis. Yes, I haven't been on the show for a while, but Elvis and I text almost every week. We certainly see each other out drinking poos, so we're, we're, still, we're still good, good <laughs> friends. But it's lovely to be back and to see you all. I think Nate gets better looking. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This engagement's been very good to you, Mr. Yes, Nate. Yes, yes. Very, very good. So I wrote a book. So um, over the pandemic, I just had to do something and um so i decided to sit down at my laptop and if somebody said i would have a book i wouldn't have believed them and you should never think about doing something that big i just read a page and then two pages and it turned into a chapter wow. and you said when your book came out elvis i was listening to the show you said everybody has a book in them it's true. I didn't quite know what you meant until I actually sat down and did it. So I sat down, I did a book, and I was thinking about what should it be? And I've been offered a ton of book deals for the celebrities I used to work with. I used to work with J-Lo and Diddy and Alicia Keys and Jessica Simpson. So often publishers have, have approached me about doing a gossip book. The problem is... By the time the book comes out, the gossip is all old news. True. Gossip's about now. Right. It's immediate. And why are you going to pay 20 bucks for a gossip when you can get it on the website for free? So I decided to write a self-help book and merge my two wor worlds. Merge my world of celebrity and self-help. And so it's a self-help book that asks really, I think, the most important question you'll ever ask yourself. Who am I? Mm. And every client I ever had, including J-Lo and Diddy, I would ask them when I first met them, who are you? Well, and the really smart ones, the really successful ones, could answer it in four words. It is true. That is a, that is a rule. Mm -hmm. Describe yourself in four words. Oh, and mm. You taught me that a long time ago. Now, before we go any further, you, you say you worked with J-Lo and you worked with all the... Tell everyone what you did for them and... and and what you learned from them. I was a celebrity publicist. So before I became a, a gossip columnist, I was a celebrity publicist. And it was such an extraordinary job because I was with the, the most extraordinary people you'll ever meet. They're really special. And what makes them so special is not necessarily talent. And I'm not being, being shady here. They're right. very talented people. They also know who they are. Hmm. They know exactly who they are. They accept who they are. They lean into who they are, and you've got to have that for success. So I thought about my own life, which had been up and down, and I was like, I don't know who I am. I could tell you everything about Julia Roberts, or I could recognize Kim Kardashian's bottom a mile away, <laughs> but I didn't know my own bum. And wow. so I was like, get to know yourself. That is deep. And that I mean, how many people listening right now is saying, oh my God, who Am I? Me. So, wait, well, when you start to discover who you are and define who you are, you get to know yourself and you can actually maneuver through life with more success. I think that's what you're trying to tell us. That's the goal here. And so I know it's difficult picking words. So I looked through my old diaries, my old notes, and I came up with a word that each of my big clients had. And it really started with Jennifer Lopez. And the word for JLo, which I think is the most important word to have, certainly for me, it's kind. Now, I know you might not think Jennifer Lopez is kind. I know you're giggling. I get it. I get it. But Jennifer thinks about kindness in, in a different way. 
And it's a way we should all think about kindness. Kindness and acceptance are really, really linked. Jennifer accepts herself. She really does. She's kinder to herself than you can imagine. She doesn't call herself names. She doesn't beat herself up. That nasty voice we all have, I have, in my head telling me I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. Jennifer's been able to turn the volume down. Yeah, you know what? She talks about that in her book. In her book, she talks about how she used to beat herself up like that. And there was a point in her life where she realized she had to change that. And then she became a happier person. It really works. I I have a damaged arm. And so my right arm was damaged at birth. And my entire life, pretty, you know, until pretty recently, I used that as an excuse for everything that didn't go well for me. And then you know what? I figured out I got a damaged arm. It's all fine. You can carry on in life. And I get it. I know you think JLo is perfect and she has no insecurities. It's not true. I've been around these really big stars and they all have insecurities. They all have those moments of doubt. Turn the volume down. And don't wow. say, if, if you wouldn't say it to a friend, why would you say it to yourself? I'm a nice guy and I'm kind to my friends. Yet I would say the most cruel things to myself. I don't do that anymore. I treat myself with kindness. You know, Rob, I remember, and I've told this story many times. I think I even wrote about it in the book. I remember where I was by myself in my living room upstairs in this house I'm sitting in right now. And I remember saying to myself out loud, oh my God, I really like me. And you know what? And I was in my 50s before I realized that I'm a really great guy. You're a great guy. And and, and when, (laughs) when you finally find a way to take that journey and discover that that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, it changes everything. Everything. And, and so, by the way, the book we're talking about, which is out today, Rob Shooter's book, The Four Word Answer, I want everyone <laughs> to grab this book. And I'll tell you why, uh, just thumbing through it, what I love about it already, is you write in short phrases and you write in short paragraphs and short uh, chapters. Why did you decide to uh, format it like that? Well, it I looks, don't know it if I great. could write any longer than that. I'm a very short <laughs> sort of person. There's not a lot of depth to me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I wanted it to be really digestible. And I think the world that I live in, the world of celebrity entertainment and news and gossip, it's a short word. And I think if you can read a paragraph a day, I know how busy everybody is. And to sit down and read a whole book can take a weekend or maybe even longer if you're Nate. But no, sorry, Nate. Try to be kind, try to be kind, kind. So this was short sort of stories and, and a little tale about it too to illustrate the stories. There's tons of celebrity quotes in there. I changed my life and now every morning when I brush my teeth, I say my four words. And what every are your night four before words? I go to bed, I'm kind, I'm naughty, I am naughty, <laughs> but I'm nice and I'm also important, and I never believed I was important. hold on, where's my, I wanna write this down. (laughs) No, no, these are, where's my friggin' pen? Okay, kind, okay, where are your four words? Because I think we should all Kind. Kind, and you are. I'm naughty. And you are, I know I'm very naughty. I'm nice, I'm a nice guy, I wanna be nice. Things come along and make me a little bit cruel, (laughs) but I just stop and I say my four words and I remind myself that I'm nice and I'm also, Important. important. I mean, that important. last word is the most important word. Yes. Because a lot of us don't realize we have an important place in this story, right? Mm-hmm. We're living a life. We're living in a world which is actually it's an ongoing story. We're living in a in a screenplay. We're living yes. in a, in a movie. Yes. And we're being in the cameras are all on us, right? Yes. Yes. And as soon as we realize that we have an important place in this world then we can help others. Now, let me just tell you something you're hearing from Rob Shooter. If you've never heard him before, whatever, this is the Rob Shooter that you get when the microphones are off as well. And, and Daniel, you know him, and, and mm-hmm. you guys, a lot of you have known him. And Gandhi, you're getting to know him. Uh-huh. It's a lot, Gandhi, I'm sorry. No, I like right. it. Give it more. <laughs> Rob has always, always been so kind and so sweet. And if ever I felt like I was uh, hitting a misstep in life, I would say something to Rob and he would immediately say in one sentence something that would bring me back to reality. And that's why this book, and I'm, look, I'm not making any money off this freaking book. I'm telling you right now. This book is going to be, I know, a great read for all of us. Even if you know what, what lane you're in, you know what? Help d- redefine the lane you're in. It's called the four word answer. All right, back to it. What else oh, is in here that we need you. to talk about? So let's talk about it being important. I learned this from Diddy. Diddy taught me the most important person in your life is you. Uh, 
And because you're the most important person in your life, you've got to invest in yourself. You've got to really think about what you want to do in life, how you can be happy. And you're in charge of your own story. You're important enough that you get to decide when to start a chapter or to end a chapter. And you know, I think a lot of us, I used to do this, every New Year's Eve when the clock strikes 12, you come up with a big plan for the next year. Diddy told me, you can do that every 10 minutes. You don't have to wait a year. Wow. And so now at the top of every hour, I reset my life. I do. I know this sounds nuts, but I close my eyes for just a second. I remind myself of my four words and I start all over. So I never, I never have a bad day anymore. I have a bad 60 minutes and then I start again. Wow. And so yeah. it's like an episode of a TV show. Every hour, start again. You don't have to go to bed and get up the next day to start over. You can start over in 20 minutes. You know what? Uh, I'm looking at all of us in the Zoom room. I see Froggy, I see Danielle, I see my Gandhi and Scotty and Skiri and Nate and you and me. Uh, and I and I think back about this past two years during this this uh, this pandemic, like what we have done to sort of reimagine our lives. Some of us more than others. And I, you know, Danielle has become to me the most definable, easy to define uh, super mom. And super friend and sister, Gandhi. Oh my God! Wait till you get to know Gandhi better. Jeez, what a year you've had, Gandhi. <laughs> yeah. I mean, artwork, boyfriend, everything. Go ahead, say. Yeah, I started um, an art business because, like you said, I was at home and I didn't know what to do with myself, so I started painting and drawing a little bit. And then, for whatever reason, people decided they wanted to buy it, so started doing that. Got to spend time with my boyfriend. I've traveled all over the place, and we took a road trip for two weeks out from Texas to California. It's been great. Ugh. So all much us, to do. All of us have redefined ourselves in some way. And, and it makes me feel like, well, I've got work to do on my <laughs> definition. But that's okay. It's never too late to get it right. rolling. Right? Yeah, researching the book, I found out that, you know, we're never too busy. We're really not too busy. It's just not a priority. And so if friends want to meet me tonight for drinks, I don't really want to meet them. I say I'm too busy. If Madonna calls, I got time. Right. And so like, <laughs> I figured out, what right. do you want to do? And I've never met anybody who is bad at what they love doing. So even though you... You make a little fun of, of your art, Gandhi, you're selling it. And if it gives you so much joy, then you're going to be successful at this because anything that gives you that much joy, you will be good at. And so I figured out all the things in my life that I love doing and I do them now. I find time for them. I'm never wow. too busy. I admit to myself, I really do. When I'm about to say I'm too busy, I say to myself, not the person inviting me for drinks because that would be rude, but I say in my own head, Mm, not a priority. And then it just makes you figure out the truth and it leads you to what you want to do. Wow. So you know, you just said something so remarkably great is you are fantastic at doing what you love. And I look at Froggy, who loves being a golfer and loves being a great dad. I look at Scary, who uh, I'll get back to Scary. <laughs> Uh, so, so I have like to have some kind of redeeming quality. <laughs> <laughs> Scary is passionate about this show and taking care of us every day. And Nate it is, you know, he loves taking care of me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but, but but many other factors about all of us. And you know what? It's so great to find the things you love about other people and recognize what makes them great. And then it helps you define what makes you great. Yeah, Frog, what? There's a great text here. It says, how do you navigate the line between self-importance and full-blown self-absorbed and being out of touch? There, there is a line. It's a really good question. My love of travel has taught me, uh, put your own mask on first. Like, you have to look after yourself. Mm -hmm. And so when you're on an airplane and there's trouble, they say, put your mask on first. I think that if you focus on yourself, that doesn't make you self-absorbed. It makes you more in touch with what you want. And when you're happy, I think those around you can be happy too. There is a line though, and we've all got those people that are self-absorbed in our life that drive us crazy, mm -hmm. that always talk about themselves. I found, and you know I like to talk about me, I found that when I remind myself who I am, that isn't one of my words. Self-important is not one of my words. And so I've actually talked less about myself because I talk to myself more often. And how many times have I used that line? 
that the uh, yeah, for sure. the airplane so line. So many times. I love you, that. You, you got to take care of yourself, otherwise you're in no position to take care of others. That's then you can you can use that as a, a life goal in anything in relationships with other people. I am worth nothing to Alex unless I'm worth something to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 100%. I'm worth nothing to anyone in this room unless I'm worth something to me. And it's self importance. No, I don't consider that self importance. It's just. It's the way it's got to be. I, I say I, that about parents all the time. I you tell talk you about that. it. Well, because I, I see like a lot of my friends will say, oh, yeah, I let myself go once I had the kids and I stopped taking care of myself. And I'm like, if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of them as best as possible? Because you want to be happy as well. And and sometimes I feel like we get lost and you need to, you know, put some importance on yourself as well as the kids, because right. I really think that. It goes hand in hand, you know? Do you know what disappears too when you feel important? This was a revelation to me. Guilty pleasures. You're no longer guilty. Right. I'm important. (laughs) I deserve it. If I want to buy a ticket for Wicked tonight, I'm going to go. Like, do (laughs) do what you like and don't feel guilty about it. And um, yeah, you're important. You are important. I want you to at least go online and almost push buy on this book. (laughs) And then when you think about it, you're like, "Mm, I deserve it. Uh, who are you in four words? The four word answer from Rob Shooter. Hey, uh, let's talk gossip. What do you have? Yes. <gasps> like, okay, J Lo and Ben Affleck. I'm still like not even believing this happened. So <laughs> I know. it didn't happen overnight because Crazy. they've known each other for years. Yeah, so. I sort of knew about it. So I wrote the breakup release all those years ago. Jennifer was on the phone and you know those releases when celebrities break up, please respect our privacy. Yeah. We're still friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so uh, I remember <laughs> says, mm-hmm. And so uh, that was the love of her life. All those years ago, she loved him and he hadn't figured out his four words. Like he just didn't know who he was back then. Mm. And so I love this about Jennifer too. And this is a really good lesson. It's in the book. But the only apology jennifer lopez accepts is a change of behavior you can't keep saying sorry to jennifer you can't you get one sorry that's it and ben got more than one sorry (laughs) now he's changed behavior and i think at the time we couldn't talk about ben's struggles but now we can because he has he's been very honest about his struggles with sobriety now he seems to be in a really good place she's in a really good place so they're meeting in the middle they're going to get married i know it they are going to get well, this married will be her number 8 and <laughs> live, <laughs> and but do you remember Elvis? Yeah. when she came in the studio and she was with ben we said she was the happiest we had yes. ever seen her remember oh, yes. right. Yeah, I remember one night going to a party with them and you don't think of this. Jennifer was drinking out of a red plastic cup (laughs) sitting on a folding stool and Ben was there and she was just so happy and no Asian pear was needed or whatever (laughs) she she did (laughs) in some interviews. She was like Jenny from the block. These two are going, they're going to get married. I think she's really, really in love. You shouldn't be surprised if... if, um, if they pop the question. And I also think too, knowing Jennifer pretty well, I think they might just run away. I'm not, you know, we know J-Lo is so grand and over the top. I don't think this is going to be a Meghan Markle type wedding. I think this might be a runaway. Last time she got married in her backyard to Mark right. Antony. Remember that? She did, so yeah. yeah. She might and by the way, it was uh, Rob Shooter here that told us uh, once they were engaged, they would not get married. And that was Jennifer Lopez and A-Rod. I knew it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's okay. You know what? She's on her journey, man. Yep. She had to. She had to be with Arod to learn something she needed to learn. Yeah, and she had to is, learn what she didn't want. That's and I got to tell you, with all the crap we go through in life, it, be, be it COVID or w- work problems, whatever, you're learning things. You learn. Mm-hmm. You learn. You, there are lessons to be learned. Sometimes you, you have to get out of it and you have to let it relax for a second. Then you're like, oh, here's what I learned. But I really think that. I learned that from you a long time ago, Rob Shooter. It's, you know, no matter what's happening, no matter how bad or good it is, you're learning. You're, we're you always learn, evolving. You learn. Right? The road of success is paved with failure. I sound like a Jan Van Zandt. I've got so good at this. I know. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Kim's bottom. I've got full self-help <laughs> mad. <laughs> what else am I going to learn from this book? I mean, give, give this book a lot of credit here because I think a lot of us are depending on it to to 
give us the charge we need. You're going to get it. I really believe in it. And I, I make fun of myself all the time. And it's one of my words. I, I like to think of myself as a funny guy. But I'm going to be serious. It's a really good book. I, I read it when it arrived, Elvis. Remember when your box of books arrived and it feels like... It was like a birth. Like it, my books arrived yes. a couple of days ago. I burst into tears. People like me don't write books. I'm from a really rough working class town in Britain where we barely had a library at my school. <laughs> I sent the box to my school, Elvis. I know. Isn't oh, that good. Nice? And, well, it's a little grand. Ten Rob Shooter and one Wuthering Heights. I mean, it's a little much. But I, um, people like me don't get to do this. And that's the whole point of the book. When you meet celebrities, when you work with them, Alicia Keys played a beat-up piano on 46th Street when she was growing up. J-Lo used to shake her bottom all over town before she got her job. You know, Barry Manilow played every dive piano bar in the East Village until you become a star. Every professional was once an amateur. And last week, I was not an author. Today, I am. I didn't oh, change. I know. Awesome. Oh, yeah, good yeah. For you. He's so you. happy. I know people can't see him, but he's so happy. Well, you know, I've rarely, I've rarely seen Rob not this happy. Yeah, um, that's true. Speaking of Barry Manilow, yes. Did okay, okay. So Rob is married to Bruce. Bruce has written music, including Copacabana and other yes. songs with Barry songs Manilow. That make the whole world sing. I know and you, exactly. So you guys know Barry very well. And I wrote about in my book how Barry was a total a hole to mm -hmm. me. He was just rude. Uh, and then his people called him, and Mr. Manilow doesn't recall ever speaking with Mr. Well. Duran. Well, he did, and he was a total <laughs> Yeah. So, so, I mean, sometimes it's okay to call people out. If they're going to be in public and they're going to act like that, we're not going to leave that under, under the rug. We're going to talk about it. I, I well, would I argue, and I, I, I believe all that, that story, I would argue that recently being more honest with who he is, Barry's discovered his four words. And when you live a lie, whoever you are, whether you hide your sexuality or your happiness, or it's a very hard life to live. And that's why I encourage everybody to lean into the truth. You're not going to run away from it. You, you, you're with yourself all the time. Got it. You've got to accept it. Mine was not being gay. The hardest thing for me was my disability. I look at photographs of me not from so long ago, and my right arm is always hidden. I'm looking at a picture of me here in the post, and if you look, my damaged arm is hidden. Now I don't hide it, and now you can't make fun of me because I let you know first. If you, if you, if you confess to what bugs you about yourself, it diffuses it. And so I think in life, find your truth. Find your truth, and you'll be happier. Wow. Deep. I mean, this is, yeah, deep. deep. <laughs> Money will not buy you this. Morning. Money will not buy you this advice. Deep. You got it for free right here. Uh, we love you, Rob. Thank and you I, for I, I, me. I could talk to you all day. And, uh, <laughs> And I miss seeing you. We shall I know see each other. We shall see. We text all the time. Let's get together and have a drinky poo uh, <laughs> and um, talk about our next books. You're writing another one, Elvis. Well, I'm trying to. Hey, uh, look, you know, if ever you have that one friend who you can always depend on to say the three words or four words, rather, to pick you up and turn you around, Rob Shooter is that guy. And you may not see him in person today, but you can read his book. I want you to get it. It's called The Four Word Answer. We're going to put you on that New York Times bestsellers <gasps> list, honey. I want to get you there. There. You deserve it. Thank you, Rob. We love you so much. Leave, leave us, leave us with one thing. Oh, the what best, do you want to leave? My, my quote of the day. So there's lots of quotes throughout the book, and I love this quote. Diddy told me once. I love this. If you're chasing your dreams, you're not running fast enough. So your dreams are not as far away as you think, and you can actually move your bottom faster than you think. <laughs> so you're going to meet in the middle. Don't chase your dreams. Catch them. Ooh. Look at you. I love you. <laughs> Rob Shooter. Again, uh, the four-word answer. It's available now. Uh, oh, did you did you do the voice for the... Uh... Do you know the Cheeky Devils? They told me I couldn't do my own audio book. Ah, I know. I had, to, I had to... Elvis, I had to audition. I know. Then I got the damn thing. Oh, what a mistake. Eight hours. It takes forever to read these oh, books. And I think I laid it on a little thick. I'm a bit scared. I haven't heard it, but I'm fearing I might sound like Mrs. Doubtfire. So I, I, went, I, went full on. I bet you're oh. fabulous. All right, Rob Shooter, thank you for being here. We gotta, we gotta take a break. The Mercedes Benz Interview Lounge.